Previously on Sports Trading Live TV, you saw us create a new football trading strategy. Then you saw us test the strategy using the football trading simulator. Now it's time for the ultimate test, the real life market. Go grab a nice cold beer or a Jaeger bomb and let's get into it. So a bit of a dramatic intro for you there, but I had to get your attention somewhere as today we're going to be running a live test on the new football trading strategy that we have been building recently. OK, now, if you checked out the previous two videos in this series, you will know that a subscriber to the channel made a suggestion of backing under two and a half goals and backing the favorite as some sort of insurance. We played around with it and uh, created a decent strategy in theory anyway on the football trading simulator then in the previous video we actually put it to the test with a few different variations okay now variation uh, number two did the best and so what we're going to do is we're going to take variation number two and we're going to try it on the live markets and again it's going to be another mini test of 10 trades but what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you every single one of them okay we're going to show you all 10 trades all done on the betfair interface and we were pretty much just trying to pick the 10 first 10 matches which actually qualified and these are the qualifiers that we're looking for okay we're only going to back favorites that are 1.9 or higher and we're only going to back under two and a half goals that are 1.9 or higher okay that was version two of it so we're going to run this through and you're going to see whether this actually made a profit on the live markets as you know it made a profit all three versions squeezed out a profit on the simulator but could it work just as good on the live markets okay we're going to dive into that right now but don't forget to absolutely smash that like button for us if you like the content that we're putting out on this channel you want to see more of this more of this sort of thing more strategy tests and similar then just smash the like button. It really, really helps the channel out and it helps us to keep going and also shows us what you like. It only takes half a second to do, okay? And depending when you are watching this video, the Football Trading Simulator software will be open for early bird access very soon. So if you do wanna get the software for yourself, submit your email address in the description of this video and we'll send you the details. If you're watching this video late, then we're just gonna put you on the waiting list for it, okay? So everything you need to know about the Football Trading Simulator, it should be in the, in the description of this video. We are testing the same strategy that we created on the simulator. Now we're gonna see if it will work on the real life markets, okay? A mini test of 10 trades, let's go. So first match in, Hamburg against Holsten Kiel, and look what's happened. The worst case scenario, early goal to the underdog. What a great start. And it's gone. Really, really uh, couldn't get it any worse. But anyway, let's, let's exit out for the loss on this one. And then we can see where this is. So it's looking to be close to uh, 24 pounds there. Let's just lock that in just to be sure. 23 pounds 80, loss on the match odds market. And then it's going to be a 24 pound loss on the two and a half goals market. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it doesn't really get much worse than that, does it? So, as, as, as we knew from the pre-testing. So we're looking at like a 46 pound-ish loss. I'll note that down and, and keep the record of it. But, uh, yeah, not a great start for the live test at all. So we found two more matches that fit. We've got West Ham here, uh, 2.34, and we backed them at 50 pounds here. And then on the two and a half goals market, 2.26, uh, we, we got matched at uh, for under two and a half goals. And we've also got Inter Milan against Atalanta from uh, Italy. So 50 pound on Inter Milan at 2.12, and then we backed under two and a half goals also at 2.12 interestingly okay so two more matches and let's see what happens with these ones about 26 minutes in on this one Inter Milan against uh, Atalanta currently nil nil uh, also West Ham Leeds is 12 minutes in but it's been suspended for a long time which is something that happens on, on, on Betfair as, as we know so a uh, bit, bit of an issue there hopefully a goal doesn't go in um, 
while it's still suspended. Hopefully they'll suspend it soon. But anyway, what you can see on Inter Milan is you can see we're in profit on under two and a half goals of plus 20 pounds, okay? And uh, we're actually at a loss on the match odds of six pounds 20. So we're probably making a little bit more profit than expected at this time of the match on the two and a half goals market. But uh, on the match odds market, we're losing a little bit more uh, than we would expect. So it's kind of balancing out. But anyway, let, let's see what happens. There's 27 minutes in on this one and 13 minutes in on the West Ham match. Uh, let's see if anything in, of interest happens. 20 minutes in, penalty to West Ham, just scored by Jesse Lingard. West Ham lead. However, the markets are still suspended. Um, and now the apparently the over and under two and a half goal market is closed and all the goal markets are closed so um yeah not really sure what to do here and obviously this is typical of, of something that could happen on betfair uh three and a half goal market is open so that's something okay um hopefully they get this resolved because this is a little bit chaotic however the good news is that the goal has gone to the favorite who we've backed okay so uh when these markets are back if these markets are back we should be able to get out with uh, some sort of small profit or scratch trade in this sort of situation anyway fingers crossed let's hope hope that betfair sort this out okay so good news and bad news is that we've got the market back open west ham against leeds but west ham have just gone two nil up so and and oh, well to, to make matters worse there isn't even a 2.5 goals market they've actually it's not actually available on, on Betfair. So, <laughs> strange, strange stuff. However, um, I mean, let's, let's try and do what we can with this. I mean, we can lock in £50 of profit on the match odds market, and that is going to cover us on the two and a half goals market. Okay, if that ever comes back, if that ever returns, then maybe we can exit out on there for um, so, some sort of loss, and then we can lock in our profit. But if not, then we should be covered, okay, by this... Uh, profit that we've made on the match odds market okay so absolutely chaos however this is what live testing is all about we want to test this on the markets and anything can happen okay i ha actually have not seen this happen before though on betfair where the the markets just disappear um like that anyway uh, it's very very strange but um i'm gonna keep plugging away to try and see if we can get exit our position on the two and a half goals market but um if not we should at least be break even okay thankfully the two goals that came went to west ham if they went to leeds would have been a world of trouble so anyway i'll keep you posted on that one 31 minutes on the clock good news we have an over and under two and a half goals market so we can salvage what we can on that market another goal goes in we're looking at a full loss on that one so let's exit out press the cash out button and uh we're going to take the loss which is looking around being what 36 pretty much 36 pounds okay so we made 50 pounds on the other on the match odds market so uh 50 pounds 86 so we're pretty much up 14 pounds in the end so chaotic but we've made a small profit not really fitting our strategy <laughs> however we've made a profit nonetheless okay let's move on to the next one so we're back the next day and we're going to take a look for some more qualifiers now there's a lot of football on this evening However, uh, just before I press record, I was trying to look for the qualifiers and it's not as, as many qualifiers as you might think. So I'm just going to bring up all the matches which look like they could vaguely qualify based on the home team's price due to the favourites price. So we've got Bolton, Cambridge and it all depends on the two and a half goal price. OK, so that one doesn't qualify under two and a half goals at 1.78. Charlton against Northampton. Uh, nope, that don't work as well. Under two and a half goals. Let's get rid of that. Uh, crew against Doncaster. I think this one's going to qualify. 2.04 uh, from League One. Okay, not the best liquidity, but we're just going to have to run with it. Uh, Plymouth, 1.96 favourites. 2.18 on under two and a half goals. So that one should qualify as well. And Dortmund, Sevilla. This one should qualify, right? Yep. Uh, good price on under two and a half goals. So uh, there's... A, a few more to add that uh, that we're going to be trading so um i'll give you an update once we get in the market once these m matches are underway and let's see if we can add to the well actually we're at a loss at the moment but uh let's see if we can get into profit okay let's see what happens 
Okay, so we're just underway in the two League One matches, okay? So Plymouth Wigan, we got matched here. Plymouth at evens, and we're in on the uh, two and a half goals market as well. 2.18, okay? And the other one was Crew Doncaster, okay? We backed Crew at 2.22. Um, Price is jumping around all over the place as, as happens when the match first kicks off and unders at 2.14 so uh, let's see how it goes let's see how it goes in these in, in these two matches 14 minutes in goal scored and it's gone to the away underdog yep you can't make this up it's gonna have to be another loser can I have one more of these with some booze in it please um, let's exit the market pretty quickly looks like it's gonna be around 24 pound loss on the match odds and pretty much 24 on the two and a half goals market so yeah our worst case scenario loss and probably because of the liquidity uh, in this match it's probably going to be a little bit of a higher loss than we anticipated i think it's going to round up to like a 48 pound loss okay so 24 pounds on a two and a half goals market and yeah 24 pounds on here so 48 pounds loss so a uh, pretty harsh loss okay um but yeah, anyway, we, we just got to uh, accept the loss and move on. So it, it adds on to our earlier loss. Um, we're still alive in the crew Doncaster match, um, just about. But anyway, let's see what develops, okay? That's another loss uh, for the system. We'll chalk it down. So we reached half time nil nil in the crew Doncaster match. So that means we're going to take a profit. However, there is something of note worth pointing out. Now, crew's price was 2.22 at the start of the match and now they've drifted out to 2.38 at half time now that's not as big a drift as we were expecting okay now main reason for that is probably because crew have been pretty dominant now, that's one thing that is in favor of this strategy if we back the favorite and they're a pretty dominant favorite but they don't score then their price isn't going to drift as much by half time they probably will start to drift uh, pretty fast after half time but let me show you the simulator estimated cruise price starting from 2.22 should be at 2.68 by half time and we should be looking at around an eight pound loss on that market um but and then a 25 pound profit overall but in this case uh four pound loss on the market okay it doesn't seem like a lot however when you up the stakes then that starts to get a bit more significant okay so it's going to be a four pound 51 loss on the match odds market Let's just lock that in, £4.51. And then we're going to take our profit on the two and a half goals market, which is going to be £33.74. So pretty much uh, a £29 profit, okay? So just, just want to point that out. It's definitely one of the things that is favourable with the strategy. The annoying part is obviously when the underdogs go and score against the script. But anyway, um, there's some profit which claws us back a little bit. And now just heading over to the Dortmund Severe match, which is just about to kick off, and we're going to get involved. And this kind of shows why it's worth waiting till till kickoff to put your uh, bets in, because Dortmund drifted a fair bit uh, leading up to kickoff. So uh, good thing we didn't back them earlier on, all right? And uh, you really want to wait till uh, kickoff with this sort of strategy for sure, unless you knew the prices were going to drift, right? Uh, so yeah. Anyway, we're in the market 2.28 uh, on under two and a half goals and then 2.36 to back Dortmund okay so yeah Champions League knockout you think it should be a bit of a slow start so fingers crossed we can make the money on this one 34 minutes on the clock we've got a goal and at least it's gone the right way it's gone to Dortmund and who scored it ah who else Holland I feel very good so uh, we can lock in a profit on the match odds market. Just going to wait for these odds to settle. And it looks like we could probably get away with a scratch trade on the two and a half goals market as well. So, um, yeah, let's take this profit. And then whatever profit is on the match odds market should then be our profit uh, uh, overall. Okay, so I'm just going to try and take this and then we're going to exit on the two and a half goals market. So, yeah, one of those scenarios where we're going to kind of win on both markets well maybe not it's going to be a small tiny loss um just press the button and get out would have been nice if we made a small profit on that market but anyway uh, it's probably neither here nor there okay uh yeah we can lock in 57 pence if i can eventually lock it in uh not sure what's going on there um but anyway we want to grab the profit and then we want to get out okay so 50 pence and then the profit that is on the match odds 
and then we're out of it okay so not not bad at all and we're starting to claw back uh into potentially maybe turning this around okay let's see what happens um i guess uh, it'll have to be tomorrow i'll have to return tomorrow find some more matches that fit and we'll trade those so i'm just about to head to bed and get some beauty sleep and then we can continue this test tomorrow but don't forget we are actually testing the same strategy that we built using this software the football trading simulator if you missed that process i'm going to link to parts one and two of this series in the description of this video and depending on when you're watching this video this software will be open for early bird access very soon so if you want to get this for yourself then submit your email address in the description of this video and we will send you the details everything you need should be in the video description so just check there and then put in your very very best email address ideally an e email address that you check very very regularly okay so click below the video and check it out but for now i'm heading to bed and we're going to continue this test tomorrow so we're back again and we're just checking out which matches uh can potentially fit the strategy to get involved with this evening and i i thought that there was going to be a lot of matches on this evening but there isn't actually that many okay a lot of early ones on and so it's just these ones to look at barnsley liverpool and psg which all potentially could fit but um let's let's take a look there are some matches in play i did miss those i've just missed the kickoff so it, it is what it is right so barnsley against derby under two and a half goals nope that's too short that gets eliminated liverpool against leipzig so it's an interesting one uh under two and a half goals 2.4 so that's gonna fit uh comfortably um be an interesting match i mean if i was to use this strategy i don't know if i'd want to use it on this sort of match to be honest um and then probably the same for this one psg against barcelona barcelona the favorites 2.48 I'm not sure I totally agree with that. Um, so again, you know, if I was really using this strategy strategically, I'm not sure I'd be getting involved wanting to back Barcelona as the favorite. And also the price of under two and a half goals is pretty high. Okay, so that's also something to think about. I mean, is there a limit on the price that we go for on the under two and a half goals? Um, would it be better to go for the under three and a half goals? This is why it's good to get into the field, into the market, and test these things out but anyway we're running the test so we're gonna have to stick with it okay we're gonna have to back the favorite doesn't matter who we think the favorite is we're gonna back the favorite in this one barcelona um and then back unders at the pretty high price okay but anyway uh it was about another hour or so to go till kickoff so i'll be back we'll get in the market and then we'll be good to go let's see what happens so it just kicked off in both these matches the liverpool match and the psg match are underway Obviously, the markets disagreed with me when I said that I didn't think Barcelona should be favourites. So they went the complete opposite and actually steamed in to 2.32 at kickoff. Uh, so we backed them there at that price and also backed under two and a half, uh, which has annoyingly drifted right at the start of the match. And we backed Liverpool 2.5 and then under two and a half goals at 2.44. OK, so we're underway in these ones like i said i'm not confident i wouldn't pick these normally but anyway let's see what happens fingers crossed well i told you it wasn't worth me going in uh, back in barcelona i told you they shouldn't have been the favorites psg have taken the lead in this one uh, to be fair barcelona actually looked pretty good in this match uh, as, as we've been watching it so far but uh, psg scored against the run of play so we're staring at another loss uh, let's lock this in it's going to be looking like a 20 pound loss on the match odds market so well 19 pounds and so 12 pounds loss on a two and a half goals market okay so adding those up, looking like around a £33 loss. Okay, really, uh, really, really not good, right? So anyway, let's take the loss on this one. Interestingly, the Liverpool match is moving in an interesting direction. Remember, we backed Liverpool at 2.5. And they're actually steaming in play because they're being so dominant uh, against Leipzig uh, so far in that one. So that, that's that's not looking too bad. Uh, <laughs> that, that would be good. And obviously, the two and a half goals is coming in nicely on there. But... Um, Yep, looks like another loss on this one. Uh, PSG Barcelona, annoyingly. 
So just gone half time in this one, Liverpool, Leipzig. And this trade has actually worked out pretty well because Liverpool have steamed in 2.5 into uh, 2.4. So we can actually make a little profit on this market. So we'll just get out here. Um, and then we're obviously going to win on the two and a half goals market. So let's just cash that out. Um, let me just go back to the match odds. Looks like we could squeeze two pounds out of that, right? So two pounds on the match odds and uh, a profit on 36 pounds 62. So that's one of the benefits of the strategy is that if you pick the right favorite, then that price might not really drift against you too much, okay? And you might actually steam and you might actually bit, make a bit of a profit on both markets in a, in a nil nil situation. So nil nil at half time, and you actually walked away with a nice, a nice profit, probably our biggest profit so far from this little test. But I, I think overall we're still a little bit down, so we're, we got, we're trying to work to try and make a profit. Um, that's it for today. Tomorrow there's a whole bunch of matches, so hopefully we can finally wrap up this test and see where we stand then. But that's it for this one. So we're actually back two days later, okay? The Europa League matches yesterday, well, none of them actually fit the strategy. Funnily enough, I was running around all day trying to make sure I could get back in time to record what is, I think, the final two matches of this, right? Um... But uh, yeah, funnily enough, none of the matches actually fit the strategy and I took some screenshots just to show you guys. It wasn't like I was trying to avoid it or anything like that. And so now we're back the day after that and I'm just looking around for matches again. And it, again, it's a strange uh, lack of matches. And to be honest, you're probably going to find the most opportunities doing this on the weekend. If I did this test on the weekend, we probably would have been over with it by now. But uh, it's been a, a quiet week surprisingly considering how things have gone recently but anyway um very shortly it looks like this match here from turkey is gonna fit and then i would assume these german matches should fit as well uh but uh yeah i'm gonna have to try and squeeze these things in today amongst uh, some some other errands as well okay really not a not a great week to be trying to record this experiment but we've got besiktas here at 1.98 and then the under two and a half goal there at two. Okay, so this is about to kick off. Um, I'm going to put the money in the market right at kickoff. And then let's see how this one goes. And then after that, we should be one more match away from completing this. So I just wanted to show we're about 20 minutes in. And I just wanted to highlight that, well, it's still nil-nil. Um, but we backed Besiktas at two. And they're actually steaming in 20 minutes in. Not, not by a huge amount. Currently 1.98 to lay. But the price hasn't really moved on them. So that's probably because they are performing uh, or dominating the match and just performing a lot better than the markets were expecting pre-match. But it kind of shows you one of the advantages of the strategy. And if we're going to keep testing this strategy, it could be a thought that if we end up in this scenario where the price doesn't move on the favorite and we can pretty much get out for a scratch trade, as you can see there, maybe that's something we consider because then we can just take the profit on the under two and a half goals, take a scratch trade on the match odds, and exit early okay that could be an, another part of the plan okay and like i said you only really find these things out when you actually dive into the markets and see some of the uh market behavior funnily enough the shit test starting to drift since i recorded this video uh since i pressed record anyway but anyway i uh, just wanted to show you the observation and also show you we're in the market let's see how this one goes until half time 41 minutes on the clock goal to besiktas which is the goal that we wanted i was getting a little bit nervous when i heard uh, the goal notification go in considering we were getting so close to half time but uh looks like we're gonna make a profit let's take the profits on the match odds market 12 second delay on turkish league matches at the moment i wonder why that is um let's go to the two and a half goal market and looks like we can take a profit on this let me just um let me just put that in because i'm not really convinced about the, what the cash out is offering us there let's uh go to match odds and see if that bet has now been taken been a while and looks like it has so we've locked in 24 pounds on the match odds and then let's see if this is taken by now i'm gonna have to move it up a bit move it up to 8.1.86 uh it's claiming it's only 50 pence cash out so these prices are still fluctuating all over the place because that, that can't be right but uh let's see what happens 12 second delay yeah that must be some sort of record i think that's the longest <laughs> in play delay i've ever seen i'm not gonna speculate as to the reasons why 
on this video. But, uh, well, yeah, hopefully this is going to get taken very soon because, yeah, it's going to start to get taken. It's offering us a 50 pence cash out, but surely we can squeeze more out of that. All right. I know this is not great to watch on YouTube, but this is realistic. OK, this is realistic. We're trying to make it. We kind of keep this as a real life uh, demonstration. Let me move it up. Let's try and get out the market. Losing my patience now, with, with, especially with this 12 second delay. But uh, yeah, so so what, what, I can, what I can show you is the price on Besiktas in the meantime. It did start to drift after that last little clip. They did start to go above evens and go, probably going up to the price where they should have been. Um, but then they have scored. OK, so on a two and a half goals market. All right, we're finally out of it. And OK, as I suspect, as I suspected, we can lock in around three pounds. 72 okay painful cash out but anyway i'm not going to bore you anymore so that 24 plus on today is going to be around a 27 pound profit so that's going to put us into profit i believe uh for this strategy and it's all going to kind of rely on the final one and how it goes right <laughs> so um yeah let's see how it goes anyway that match has now gone into half time we did get the profit out of that uh, as you can see so I'm just moving on trying to see what is uh, coming up next and uh, this match from Poland looks like it could fit uh, let's click on this and take a look we're just gonna go with whatever is kicking off next under two and a half goals is too short on that one um, this one's too short a home favorite so it's probably gonna have to be this one uh, from the Bundesliga 2 and it's, it's not it's not great because I mean who is the favorite here just about Hamburg but <laughs> that could easily flip around uh, in, in play, especially when the home team are, are, are that price. But we, we're going to have to go with it. I really want to wrap this up and try and draw some conclusions, OK, as I'm sure you you do also. So we're going to get involved on this one. We're obviously going to be back in Hamburg and then we're going to back, uh, yeah, two and a half goals. It is. It does fit. I was assuming. I didn't even check. I was just assuming because it is the German league. But um, so that definitely fits. Let's uh, get involved in this one. It's going to kick off very soon. And it all kind of relies on this one. I mean, if we take a loss on this match, it's going to bring us back pretty much to break even with this little test. If we make a win, it's actually a pretty nice profit, a bigger profit than maybe we expected compared to the simulation. So, uh, yeah, a lot relies on this match. Let's see what happens. So I just wanted to confirm we are in play in uh, what is pretty much the decisive match of this little mini test. And what kind of seems to be a theme with this strategy is that we're kind of relying on that final match to tell us whether we're going to be in some sort of uh, profit or not. Why do we have to cut these things so damn close? But I just want to show you, we backed Hamburg 2.6 and we're about two minutes in, already starting to drift. Not a good sign and something I suspected when you get uh, teams in this sort of price band. Uh, oh, under two and a half goals, uh, we backed it at 2.26 and that's ticking in nicely, okay? So, let's see. Let's see what happens. Are we going to end this with a profit or uh, end it in a damp squib let's see we've had a goal and it's obviously going to be a pretty decisive goal as regards to our little mini test experiment that we're doing in this video we knew there would be a siege the goal has come and as you can see the goal has gone the way we wanted it's gone to hamburg and do you know what i'm just going to press the cash out button and get out of this and yeah we can just call it a day okay so um we're gonna have the profit on the match odds of uh should be 29 pounds once that's uh, once that's greened up and then we're, we're gonna be taking a loss obviously on the two and a half goals market but uh minor loss in, in the grand scheme of things okay so pretty much uh what some would say is, is a well, actually now nah, it's not really a scratch trade but it's close to it so small loss on the two and a half goals market if we're a little bit patient i'm sure i could get that loss down lower but i just want to wrap this up because it's been a it's been a long journey so it's going to be around a three pound 50 loss and then 29 profit okay so that adding on to everything else i'm sure that's going to put us into a, a pretty nice profit for the overall mini test okay time to tally things up and then time to get down to the kind of overall analysis my own thoughts on how this strategy has gone because obviously it's not just as simple as that it's not to say hey we've made profit over 10 trades that's it you know uh, there is obviously a lot more to this but um yeah let's uh get back to the drawing board and kind of assess 
uh, all the results. So as we were wrapping up and editing this video, it was brought to my attention that we did not show the profit that we took from the Inter Milan match, okay? That was Inter Milan against Atalanta. That was at the same time as the Leeds West Ham match. So that probably just got lost in the madness. But I can confirm it was nil-nil at halftime. So with that strategy, you know, at nil-nil at halftime, we're going to be taking a profit. And the profit was £22.68 from that match. So there is your evidence there that it was nil-nil at halftime. And so we can now check out the final results with this, okay? Remember the, the big loss we took on the very, very first trade. How many people would have just given up as soon as they took the loss after five minutes of the very first trade? But then uh, we, we kept it going, and then it was a frustrating. The Plymouth loss set us back again. But then we finally got a decent run, and then the PSG loss put, put us back again. But then we finished off on a decent run, okay? The Liverpool profit was definitely good and then a Besiktas, and then a Hamburg profit as well. So give or take a few pence here and there, our final profit was around £55. So that is not bad at all. And it's actually in keeping with uh, what we saw with the football trading simulator, okay? So before anyone does start in the comments, I need to put out the usual disclaimer that this is a small sample recorded for the purposes of this video to try and keep this video as entertaining as possible. Um, there's obviously no guarantees that it would show a similar profit over a larger sample. The next step from here would definitely be to see if there is any sort of statistical filtering that can improve this, but it's looking quite promising so far. And we've definitely learned a few things from this, and that is the main purpose of doing live testing, okay? We can run it through the simulator, but you need to put it in the markets and kind of see how it behaves. The main thing I learned was that there actually wasn't as many qualifiers for the strategy as I thought there might be. It actually took the course of a week to collect just 10 trades. So that's one reason why, again, the football trading simulator is so important as we could test that strategy within minutes over tons of matches. But if you wanted to test that strategy on the real life markets, it could take you a week to get 10 samples. OK, so that shows you the difference of kind of using a simulator or the main advantage of using a simulator anyway. Um, but the other thing I learned during this live test was regarding the market behavior. And it was during this test that I actually had a very big realization. You got me. An absolutely huge realization, which kind of could change everything. And I'm going to tell you what that realization was in just a moment. But I do just want to remind you, depending on when you are watching this video, the early bird access for the football trading simulator is going to be opening very, very soon. Uh, submit your email address in the description of the video and we will send you the details. If you're watching this video a little bit late, you have to go on the waiting list. OK, but everything you need should be in the description of this video. Just put in your very, very best email address and then the information will be sent to you if you want to get hold of the football trading simulator to use for yourself. But anyway, moving on to the big realization that I did have regarding this strategy. Now, remember, when we started out with this strategy, we were looking at using under 2.5 goals or trading under 2.5 goals with insurance, okay? Using the match odds market as some sort of insurance against an early goal. But I'm going to go out and just say, Do you know what? I've realized this is not an under 2.5 goals with insurance strategy. Not at all. I think what we're dealing with here, this is a back the favorite with insurance strategy. I think this is the angle that we would, should be approaching this strategy with. If you think back to some of the examples in the video, the Liverpool match, the Besiktas match, especially just come to mind, was that if we can identify a strong favorite, a, a favorite where we feel there's some value in their price, we can back that favorite, then also back under two and a half goals. It's just some, it's just to build up some sort of insurance should they, should they not score during the first half, okay? And so if we are backing the correct favorites most of the time, we should end up in situations similar to the Liverpool match or, or similar to the Besiktas match where the price is going to steam or at least stay static on the favorite. So if they don't score, then we profit on the two and a, on the under two and a half goals market okay if they do score then if it's early on fair enough it, it could they could cancel each other out 
But if they're scoring after 20 minutes, well, we're still going to make a profit, okay? And then, of course, there is scope to maybe see how this could play further in to the second half and thinking about potentially locking in the profit on the two and a half goals market if it remains nil-nil at half time, and then leaving that there as some sort of uh, leverage or hedge against the favorite, okay? But maybe I'm starting to get a little bit ahead of myself and a little bit more complex. That's time to kind of jump on the simulator again and kind of see how that would play out. But I think that's my realization with, with testing this strategy is that I think you should approach this from the angle of, is this a strong favorite? Do we want to be back in this favorite? Okay, now should we take under two and a half goals as some sort of insurance uh, at the same time, rather than looking to back under two and a half goals and back the favorite um, as some sort of insurance? Okay, we, maybe we should angle everything towards that favorite scoring first. And again, maybe some sort of uh, adjusting of the staking. It may be in this case, if it is a back the favorite strategy, maybe we look to then put 60% on the favorite, 40% on unders. So we could get a bigger profit if the favorite scores. But again, like I said, there is just so many possibilities with this. And that is why we have the football training simulator now to really, really help us out. And we can get the answers really, really quickly. But anyway, it has been emotional. I want to hear what you guys think of uh, the video, the strategy, how it played out, any sort of improvements, feedback, all your ideas. They're really, really good. They are really, really helpful. And just leave them in the comments. I try and reply to as many comments as possible, especially in the first few days after the video is out. So just leave a comment and I will get back to you on there. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Like I said, it has been emotional. If you like this channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. If you want to keep watching, then there are two videos on the screen which are really, really good. And you should check those out right now. I'll see you in the next video.